<laughs> I'm just I'm just thinking about a giant candy martini. That's all. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For for those who are watching on video, um, Ken brought all the candy <laughs> in, a, in a giant martini. So I'm just gonna sit here quietly while Doc talks promotion, and I'll I'll just pick my way through. Um, chocolate euros. <laughs> oh, I love those back in the day. <laughs> I'll oh put this aside. God. It's gonna I cause forgot distractions. All about those. <laughs> those were the best. You got the chocolate euros, and it either had like the little rice krispies in it, or they were like plain. Yeah. But they were so good. Wow. Yes. What did, so what do we do? <laughs> what do we, what do you do in the in the U.S.? Because so in Canada we have our our dollar coin and our two dollar coin. We have coins, the loony and the toonie. <laughs> so it makes sense for us to have these these chocolate coins. These ones are euros. So like, do do Americans just buy yeah, chocolate so, euros? <laughs> no, we had silver dollars, and so what oh, they did was they copied yeah. silver dollars. And if you remember the old Ben Franklin silver dollars were relatively huge. True. And then you had yeah. half dollars. So they would make them and it would be in like blue, uh, gold, silver, red, uh, yellow, green. Okay. I mean, it right. just, they were like in a big bag and it looked like, you know, pirate doubloons, right? <laughs> and it's yeah. all, and then so everybody, every kid got those in their stocking at, at Christmas. Oh, yeah. And it's weird because yeah, I don't see those anymore. And I wonder if it's because like the Susan B. Anthony is just a little taste. <laughs> you know, <it's> <laughs> You got to make like a, a not to size larger version. Oh yeah. my goodness. I, that is so nostalgic. It kind of messed me up because I haven't seen those forever. And I hadn't realized I hadn't seen them because, well, you know, as adults, we just eat the Hershey's Kisses, you know, which is, again, one of the best Christmas candies out there is Hershey's mm. Kisses and red and green M&M's. <laughs> I love the red and green M&M's with peanuts in them. I, oh, I'm not a Hers I'm not a Hershey's person because again, I'm I'm Team Cadbury all the way. And actually, oh, yeah. my my go to absolute favorite Christmas stocking stuffer candy wise is the our Kinder eggs and like not the ones that they sell here in the states, which are garbage, no, the but actual the actual Kinder egg, egg yeah. with the toys in it. Yeah, man, how but, depressing uh, is it that our country decided that kids <laughs> might swallow it, so we just didn't put it in there? But like the whole rest of the world, the kids are smart enough not to swallow it. Yeah, no, it's like, the silliest thing. It was one random mom panic because their kid did something stupid and they stopped selling them, and that was yeah. the end of that. <laughs> it's so yeah. funny. And uh, yeah, you're right. The Kinder Eggs is amazing. And I guess the closest thing we got that is pretty good is Lint's, but those are a little yeah, high Lint. profile for like, you know, yeah. general family use. And then the Dove bars, though. The Dove. Oh, the Dove. Yeah. Great. Christmas yep. thingies. Yo. Yep. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> All we're right, not so starving, so we're ready. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, we think Diana's not here. Diana would be really pissed at us right now. <laughs> I we might have, yeah. I we oh, yeah, we have, I have a good I have a good selection, so I feel like we could we could keep her happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, so funny, so funny. All right, so gang, uh welcome to the live taping of this week in chocolate. Um no, we're gonna be talking about podcasting stuff, and you know, everyone's favorite question is like, how do I promote my podcast? That's not really the question you're asking. Is you like, okay, doc, send me like two thousand people to listen to my podcast. That's, <laughs> exactly. that's, all that's you, the real that's, question. Yeah, that's all you really want, and uh, we'll we'll cover that. We'll cover that a little bit as to what it actually means, because I swear, every person, like we were at podcast movement, legit, one of the most common questions that came up if you weren't talking about video podcasting is like, how do I get more people? You know, that, how do that I get is, more people? Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a common question. Right. And then, so there's ways, I mean, you already know this stuff. Everyone knows this stuff because you've been buying things your whole life or going to your favorite restaurant. <laughs> and, and a lot of you have been around for the grand opening of these restaurants or grand, you know, True. beginning of your favorite product. Like a lot of you guys started like me on iPhone one when everybody laughed because we were the only idiots that were dumb enough to buy the seven hundred dollar <laughs> phone. And then now every the same person that told you they would never buy one of those stupid phones, they got one and they buy a new mm -hmm. one every year. So yeah, just understand it. And it's really good we're having this conversation today too, because I had a long talk with Dina last night about this. So it's kind of funny. It just sort of wraps into what we're going into. Research done. Thanks, Dina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the recording. And then please, if you have questions along the way, make sure you drop that and cue colon those bad boys so that we yep. can find it 
And at the end of the Casty Cast, we will come in and answer your questions. Okay. Sure well. And don't forget, we do this every Tuesday right here. If you have a question for us, you can send it to us on Volley or email. And also, if you haven't done so already, give us the only Christmas present we ask you for, and that's to go over and the old review section on the iTunes iTunes e box. Uh, what is it called? Yeah. Podcast. Apple Podcast. I forget. You got to use the fancy new words now. It's still, <laughs> Next it's week's episode is iTunes. just Doc. It's just Doc reviewing all of our reviews and crying because we don't have enough. So if you, if you want to avoid that episode, you need to go over there. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, even you know, even moderators can leave a review, Paul. <laughs> true. True. Oh God. <laughs> It's going to be a goofy episode. Uh, very little sleep last night because of, um, we call her Madam Pele. She is the goddess of fire. And she thought it was a good idea to spit up all over the big alley yesterday. And yeah, it's not going to get us. It's actually not even going towards people. It's sliding down the backside of the That's caldera, good. which is uninhabited. Mm -hmm. So it's not really going to affect Kona or whatever. But what happens is all of the ash cloud, it Ugh. gets spread across the air and it's been windy the last couple of days so it comes here and nose jacked eyes jacked like Aww. everything so all of us like sniffly kids yeah it just be really bad uh mm -hmm. Ken and glenn would be super super sniffly right now over here <laughs> okay so we're going to start um let's get it twisted mr camera junkie get ready Every, we got our records pressed it uh yep we do Yep. Uh, when you guys were wondering, one of the things that uh, Katie and I do is even though we're the guests, and if you're the guest on somebody's show and you are an Ecamm user, press record only on your side yeah, while you help do them the out. screen. So just in case something happens, you can always send them your video file and they can figure it out. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a, a pro tip in case you hadn't heard that. <laughs> pro tip. Man, let me water this face real fast. And then we start. <laughs> Look at that fancy water. It looks like a 40, but I swear to you, it's just Mountain Valley spring water. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mountain why, Valley Why beer, they put it sir. in a beer bottle, I have no idea. I hate beer. So it's funny because I'm like, if you're drinking this in the car, I swear you get dirty looks. People are like, this yeah. fool is straight drinking the Heine <laughs> while he's on the freeway. I'm like, spring water. And they're like, both hands on the wheel, dummy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's super funny. I'm waiting for the day I get pulled over because they think I'm drinking a Heine. Okay, oh gang, my goodness, we, we, go. have, we have getting things done is tuning in from the Waffle House. Will you eat some waffles you for me? I love the Waffle House. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm easily distracted today. I'm back. No, Everyone ready for distractions? First of all, JD. <laughs> I, JD is always at the Waffle House, Katie. That is oh, part of his brand. JD oh, lives I, at the Waffle House. I hope you actually are, though, because the Waffle House is the best. It's like the it's worst so and the best at the same time. You know, do you know between podcast movement and content marketing world, when I went home for a second to visit my sister, that was my first time ever stepping foot in a Waffle House. <gasps> oh no, it's a magical place. It's so good. It's, it's, it feels like you're stepping into the 1950s or 60s. Like people still are like straight up smoking while they're having their coffee. And it's like, everything is so cheap. It's ridiculous. And the food is like great, but also terrible. And all of the workers, horrible. all of the workers there look like the time machine just exploded. Yeah, on hag they're like <laughs> haggard, but like amazing at their jobs. <laughs> and the, the lady yeah. was just so nice, but she looked like she'd been through some things, yeah. but she was really, really beautiful. Uh, yeah. I forgot what it was, but it was something about the potatoes with all the stuff on top. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot what it's called, but I, I had that. It was, it's like, it a, was like a cash, like a hash scrambled. God, yeah, <laughs> all, all the way or some kind of way or whatever, but it was fan glorious with the weekend. <gasps> Look at all these people who have never been to a Waffle House. I know this is like a Southern Thank American you, thing. I know it's we're missing out. I need to <laughs> shame. You know what? The next time we're we're traveling, we will have to like live podcast from a Waffle House. I think it'll be it's fantastic. covered in smother. Did you write that or Caleb wrote that? I didn't write that. I love that. That must that. be Caleb then, because it's Todd, called covering and smothered. Todd has I Todd has Waffle House Christmas coffee cups. Todd, you're gonna make me cry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry. I need those. I need those so oh, bad. All right, hey, so sorry, this we were starting. We were starting. And Waffle House. <laughs> Debbie, Katie, focus. Sorry, it's Man. noon here. <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> I know what it is. You're delirious from all of the moving boxes. Moving. I, yeah, my legs are are screaming. And my watch told me halfway through the move, like halfway, not even all the way through the move. My watch was like, congratulations, you've climbed 103 flights of stairs. And I was like, my legs hurt so badly. I could cry. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. glorious. Oh, God, that's too funny. All right, gang, here we go. Let's start this. While, while we got the energy banging, let's pop this. See, this is why you got to show up for the live recordings. And five, four. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Flow. You know what, Katie? <laughs> this and edition. I'm Katie Fox. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm finally back. <laughs> I'm supposed to, yeah, who are you? Who the heck is this lady? And what the heck you doing, Katie? I was supposed to say I'm Dr. Rocky Community Manager here at Ecamp Live, and we already know who the missing person is. Uh, now I can call the milk box company and tell them to take your face off. <laughs> I know. Thank you so much to to Doc for holding down the fort. I was like, I can do this. I can move and run a big sale and all the things and also park. And it, w it was not true. So sometimes it's good to have a co-host who can <laughs> cover your back. Uh, but yeah, I'm this excited is to where, be back. This is where the episode that Jared and I talked about, which is two episodes ago, which is why pod swaps is actually pretty oh, handy yeah. because if yep. something comes up, like um, the last two Tuesdays of the year, I'm going to be in Japan. And mm -hmm. then so it's a good opportunity to do a pod swap. It's a good opportunity yeah. to call on somebody like Mary Lou and Kirk or somebody like oh, you yeah. guys be Doc and Katie or whatever, because yep. we're gone. <laughs> And, yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Ecamm is closed the last week of the year, people. All right. Nobody call <laughs> us. Fix all, break everything now so we can help you before. <laughs> anyway, so the the thing that's really, really cool, Katie, is this episode, our podcast is old enough to drive. I guess we're gonna be 18. Sweet. 18. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's old amazing. enough to drink in Canada, <laughs> well, parts true. of Canada, not in the U.S. Uh, yeah, not but the US. It's, it's funny how it seems like that's a daunting task if you tell somebody when they first start, like you know, you're going to be 18 episodes in in no time. By the time we're done with the year, we'll be at 22 episodes. We're going to it's, end. The it goes year by on my number. It goes by so fast. It like and every single episode. I, you know, I leave kind of being like, oh, I learned this, these four things, or I, you know, I, it just, I'm filled with such excitement. It was so much fun. Kind of, I was in this space where I've been obsessed with listening to podcasts while I'm packing and moving and doing all of the stuff. I have like my, you know, AirPods in walking around pod, listening to podcasts. And I love that all, you know, podcasters are always like, we're coming to you from the pod lab. And I was like, oh man, I'm back in the pod lab today. <laughs> <laughs> today in the studio is the pod lab because it's fun to I say. Like it. <laughs> it's fun to yeah. say. I like it. And well, you know, I think a lot of people don't understand, you know, they say, okay, I want to start this podcast, but I'm not an expert or whatever. Good. That's exactly Good. why I started the podcast. <laughs> because <laughs> the question that you have, you interview the people with the answers, right? Uh, you bring in the community members with the answers and yeah. you will learn something as well. And what's crazy about that is while you're in that process, you are learning as well as creating. And there's a whole bunch of people that are exactly what you are but are too proud to ask that question, mm -hmm. right? Like when it comes to questions and it comes to whatever industry you're in, you want to be TLC. You ain't too proud to beg. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, but a lot of people, they won't do it because they've been told by everybody else that they have to look like an expert and you know, yep. be a, yep. a certain way. And that's not really the case. So coming in, hey, everybody, I don't know how to do any of this. Come with me. Let's do it. It's a fantastic journey. I say this all the time. The follow me journey is one of the biggest things popping on YouTube, but somehow nobody seems to pay attention to that. And hey, it helps. So we're going to talk about what today, Katie? What'd you put in store for me? <laughs> today, we are talking about how to promote your podcast, all things podcast promotion. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Oh, are God. you that, ready for this? That, that is a good one. It, it turns out that's the biggest question whenever we do shows or, you know, um, for as long as I've been in podcasting, which is back like 2004, when you had to hand code this stuff, uh, that was a question. That's always been the question. It probably will always be the question. So let's, let's answer. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, okay, we've built it. Now will they come? <laughs> and how do we get them to come? Right. Uh, and once you have people, how do you get more people? I, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's always going to be a question. And disclaimer, you know, in the way that Doc just brilliantly 
phrased how, you know, you should always be learning and growing and not kind of afraid to just start, even if you don't know all the things. We don't know all of the things about podcast promotion. We're we like, we're it. testing and trying. <laughs> Doc knows all the things. <laughs> I don't know all the things about podcast promotion. I'll but we, go but I think it's an, it's an iterative process. It's a process where you're going to test and try things. And again, you should be following and listening to and engaging with other podcasts that are in your topic out of your topic because you're going to find some amazing ideas and you're going to see people doing things that you're like, oh, that could work for my audience. That could be a really cool, you know, promotional idea or, you know, cool marketing thing that I could try. So I, I'm constantly <laughs> learning from other, other live streams and other podcasts. I think it's a, it's a really great thing to just test it out and see if it works for you. Oh, that's cool. Well, I, I knew you were Canadian, but I didn't know that you were into dog sledding, but what does dog sledding have to do with podcasting? <laughs> What does oh, dog sledding have to do with? You said dog it was I did I did a ride process. What? <laughs> Iterative process. Oh, okay. Sorry, I mixed it up. I mixed it up with dog sledding. <laughs> okay, that was I'm like wait, what did far I say? reach for a wait. joke, people? <laughs> let me let you know that was a super far reach. Okay, so uh, what's the first question, Katie? Let's pop it. Let's jump right in. All right. How do podcasts get promoted? <laughs> We're going to start at the beginning, the very beginning. Oh, okay. All right. Well, they don't. <laughs> Let's just start right there. They absolutely don't unless you put in some groundwork. And I think this mm -hmm. is where a lot of people drop the ball. Unless you actually put in some groundwork, it doesn't get promoted. No one's going to know about you or see you or do whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, the funny part is I think people think just by putting it in a directory, that's going to work. If you count the amount of businesses back in the day when, you know, when you first start your business, you would go into your local, you know, establishment and you fill out the paperwork and they'd give you a tax license. If your business had a physical location within about three days, I swear to you, the yellow pages person would be Hey man, have you ever thought about getting uh, and adding your, what the, how the hell do you know I just started a business? <laughs> like they was quick, right? Because yep. they were somehow through Cardinal mail services or some other thing, they somehow knew that you just got registered for a business. So the yellow pages people would show up, you know, the best thing about the internet is the yellow pages people went away, <laughs> but they used to come to your door and ask you to buy yellow page ads. They're legit people back in the day who thought they could just put in, you know, a, a, a exterminators in front of yellow pages and all of a sudden everybody with bugs was going to call them it didn't, mm -hmm. doesn't work it's just legit doesn't work another thing i got a question for you here's one i'll throw it back at you have you ever seen a number on the side of a vehicle and remembered to call that number when you need it whatever they were serving in that vehicle <laughs> no <laughs> not a one not a once yo i am like 50 1100 years old and I have never pulled a number off of a vehicle and thought I'm going to call this plumber, exterminator, tree cutter, like, you know, lawyer. This Although, lawyer. you know what I will say, though, which is probably where you're going anyway, is I will say that I do. I am like constantly consuming all of that content that's around me. So like we have we have plumbers in our city. And they drive their their little trucks, vans, whatever they are, are constantly like driving around the city. So I now, the second that I think of plumbers, like I can see their logo, I know their name. So like I could find them, even though I would never have their phone number memorized and they have it right. on the side of their van. But the second I'm like, I need a plumber, I'm like, oh yeah, those guys that are constantly in our city, they must be popular because they're constantly driving around. around. So when you're thinking about podcast promotion or you're thinking about promotion in general, you need to be all the places. And even if you put right. your email and your number and your volley and your whatever else, they may not find you that way or click through on that link, but showing up consistently you know, in front of them is going to help. So you're okay. You kind of covered what I was going to say. The, I want to, okay, I want you to think of the number as the come listen to my podcast at the end of all of the places that you put it the link to your podcast at the end of the place is all you put it stop that it doesn't work okay it just doesn't work no one found your podcast because at the end of everything you're like hey da -da 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 -da. and normally what happens is it's either too fast or it's too long and so mm -hmm. neither one of them work if it's too fast they can't read it they miss it there's a frustration there you don't realize it but you put a tiny frustration in someone's head they kind of let everything else go and they don't even know they do it. It's just the way the brain works. Yep. 
if you leave it too long, they get irritated that you stop them from the next piece of content that they were going to, if they're on, you know, uh, fever scroll or autoplay or something of that nature. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, for instance, like MSNBC news at the end, their out bumper on YouTube is way too long and it irritates me because I want to hear what they got to say when they're done, I'm ready to go to the next one, but they got the whole dun, 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 dun. You almost think it's over? Dun, 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 dun. There's a couple more. And it's like, please stop. Please just make it short. Be like, thank you for watching us on YouTube. Peace. Boom. Out. Like, make it quick. So what you want to do is you want to do what Katie says. You want your vehicle to be seen everywhere. You want that. If, if they took the space that takes up a number, and in most people's vans or whatever, it's roughly about four inches tall and like the width of the vehicle. If you remove that, and just made the logo bigger or made it something else stick in their brain, like a funny saying or whatever, that mm -hmm. would probably work much better than your number and your website. Some people yep. got the number, their website, many states make you put the license. So put the license nondescript because nobody reads it. Nobody cares. The state says it has to be there. Just, excuse me, just put it there. But what you would do is if you go to a platform, say like IG or LinkedIn, and this is something that we got to do. So I can just tell you, this is what's going to happen. We are not IG, perfect already yet to do all yeah, of the promotion. <laughs> We're learning as we go. And nor yep. should you, nor should you. I feel that by the end of the year, when we're at episode 22, and then soon yep. after we come back, we'll be at 25. Yep. Now I think it's time to hardcore going on to promote it. Yep. What I think a lot of people want to do is have two episodes and promote, and you're not there yet. Right. The the murder podcast <laughs> can can't do that. Binge listen. They, yeah. Right. They have a vehicle behind them. Yeah. Right. You don't have enough content or SEO or whatever in mm. order to let that happen. So it's not going to really work. And I tell people all the time, if I did exactly what you said, and I called Oprah and I was like, yo, oh, yo, Katie wants you to send like two million people <laughs> to her podcast. So you're like, yeah, doc, you get, you get some listeners. They get some, everybody gets some listeners. So Oprah would send everybody to your podcast and they will listen to it and be like, what the was that? And there's no more because you yeah. have nothing for them. So the worst thing you can do when everyone's been in this situation, everyone's been in the line where they were giving out the free smoothies or whatever, and then they get to you and there ain't no more. Mm -hmm. Right. Or you got it. And it was like one little spoon of something and you like, all right, that doesn't entice me to buy more. That kind of <laughs> pees me off, right? At least at Jamba Deuce, when they give you a sample, that's a decent sized sample. And I think that mentality of everyone's like, oh, I'm going to just let them, and they're going to want it. And I don't think that really works either, right? And you have probably been more frustrated by the sample size. So don't ask everybody to come to your house and you ain't got, you know, horse diverse ready. If you don't have <laughs> the chicotery board done up, don't invite people to your house. Yeah. So don't be in a hurry. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Right. Nailed it. Nailed it. I, I, yeah, I, I think it's, it's one of those things that you should absolutely be thinking about because as you said, it doesn't go by itself, but, but have a plan and you don't need to do all 55 things on your plan within the first three days of launching your podcast. <laughs> Space it out. You've got this. You'll get there. Man, I like it. I'm going to type it in the things I remember. Okay. What, what's the sugi no koto ga? Sugi no shitsumo wa nan desu ka? I'm practicing. I'm practicing for my trip. I, I said, next question. Next question. That's going to make the script so difficult. I'm going to be like, it's going to be a jumble of words. I'm not going to know what it is. I forgot Where... about that. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Where should I promote my podcast? I'm just trying to think of what kind of words the script is going to write for Oh, that. every time that you speak Japanese, I'm like, wait a sec, what is he trying to say? Because sometimes I'm listening and sometimes I'm just reading. It's too funny. Oh, that's super funny. Okay, where you should put your, from, from little, 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 that, where should you promote your podcast? Everywhere. But Everywhere. Yeah. Taste. Okay, so again, screaming, come to see my podcast doesn't work, right? It just doesn't. We're in a different thing. Um, there is a new conversation moving around in the marketing world and it's going to marketers are going to hate it, but it is <laughs> stop selling your. Yes. 
That is a new stop. conversation <laughs> in the marketing space is yep. stop selling your stuff. Yep. Because yeah. that's not how people trigger buy anymore. People yep. trigger by the way they always triggered by, but it's just, you know, they, we think it's different, but technically it's the same. It just takes longer. So in our world, world tour, one of the things in our speech is that it takes, you know, when I was in B school, I learned it takes seven touch points before somebody mm -hmm. makes a purchasing decision from you. And it's not just, I played you an ad seven times. No. Yeah. It's, it's I interacted, in all different places. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Interacted, yeah. sent an email, had a conversation, said what's up at the Piggly Wiggly, like whatever, like that, that there's about seven different touch points that happens. And that was hard, but the new answer is 11 to 13. So yeah, you need more touch points. And so, as I said yesterday, uh, silver lining home place, I like to say home plate and it probably drives her crazy. <laughs> Uh, Dina and I had this fantastic conversation and we were talking about, well, how do you do that in reels? Because right now for her and I in reels, we're just having fun. We're just putting up our stuff, but we know we have to get on point. Yep. And I'm like, so my strategy is going to be as I'm moving forward, I've done the fun part. I've kind of figured things out, learn what works and what doesn't. Now I can go into my strategy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be like three for them and one for me. And then eventually mm -hmm. that'll turn into like five for them and one for me. Yep. And then eventually that'll turn into like, you know, say six for them and two for me or something. Right. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean by that? One where you're just being yourself, having fun, letting the people know who you are. The number one thing that most marketers forget is you're not giving people to have the opportunity to learn who you are. And I mean, the actual you, not the suit and tie buttoned up, whatever, whatever you. One of our dearest influencers, influencers, somebody that I absolutely love. She's super funny, hilarious. She was a great speaker. Uh, we had a chance to physically meet her in San Diego, and that's Millie. The modern Millie is, you know, mm -hmm. the name of her thing. And she goes, you know, hey, Amesbury, it's lunchtime. I know, yeah, sorry. <laughs> like, lunchtime <laughs> over, my bad. Uh, she goes, all the, and man, me and Luis probably just had a nostalgia moment. And you know, <laughs> Put down your sandwiches, hold well on. Wait, no, he's thinking about that ham and manchego right now. <laughs> so <laughs> Luis just started drooling all over his keyboard. Um, <laughs> Millie, Millie, you know, she's a, a beauty influencer, right? But yep. then she turned it into, into a, like, how to be an influencer influencer. And, yep. like, she's teaching people how to run real strategy and things like that. Millie comes from being the beauty influencer, but she will go on IG, no makeup, whatever, and just be like, hey, this was too important to stop and do all my stuff to look cute for you. And then she's like, well... I'm going to spit out four pieces of content while I'm putting on the makeup and talking to you. So you're like, Hey, so as you're working on your Instagram reels, like, I don't know what all those things are called. I know that they're on my table in the bathroom. I just don't know what they are, but she's over there and she's doing all of the things. And she's telling you about a real strategy while she's yep. getting ready for the day. Because when people see that somebody who came from the beauty influencer world, who always looks great on camera, who's yeah, always well been put vulnerable. together, well presented, yep. and she's going to come in here like wrecked up from the neck up and tell you the same thing. They trust that person more because you're not hiding behind a facade. Yep. Right. One yep. of my biggest arguments, I, I'm not allowed to say this in this in in I'm not allowed to say this on the stream next to my boss, but you know I have no filter, so here it comes. One of my <laughs> biggest pet peeves in the ecamp community is I am trying to do this because I want to have a, a professional looking podcast or I want to look professional. And my answer is always the same and it pisses people off and I do not care. Stop trying to look professional, just be professional. Yeah, just be professional. And that can mean completely different things for everyone. Like that, that can mean a completely different thing for you, for me, for Ken and Glenn, for all of our people listening. Like it, it depends on what you do and what your content is about and who you are but yeah i think authentic is much more important Thank than professional 100 um, percent. i agree with you Most people would wanna... never expect to see ken and glenn just like hanging out in their jeans and t-shirts <laughs> and 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 also pulling out their laptop to write a new version of ecam in the middle of a damn event oh yeah 100 percent. or in the middle of a stream <laughs> yeah I mean, they would just stop that... anywhere and be like oh hold on what are you doing? I'm oh, making video ISO. We're eating dinner. <laughs> that's yeah. that's professional to me. 
right? Coming in and saying we're great coders and parading around in like, you know, Cody nerd shirts, whatever. They don't even wear e gear no matter how much we yell at them. It's always SpaceX. And I'm like, damn yeah. it, you got to wear the e Or Tesla. <laughs> or, or Tesla, <laughs> right, yeah. right. So it's funny, but they're actually being professional. We all know this because we use the software. They don't yeah. go around and have to parade how cool they are as coders. Yeah. That yeah, never exactly. comes out. You never yeah. even see them. If it wasn't for us forcing them to do a Q&A, you would know who the hell Kenny Glenn was. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's the same thing for like uh, Pat Flynn, who I, I know I use constantly as an example, but Pat Flynn is another amazing example of this, right? Pat Flynn loves Back to the Future. Like, I mean, loves, loves Back to the Future. Pat's got like tons of Back to the Future stuff in the background of his streams and his videos and everything he does. His fans send him Back to the Future stuff. When they see something, they think of him. When they see, you know, one of the Back to the Future cars, they're like, oh my God, it's a they, like it connects them with him, right? I'm the same way with bowling pins and chickens and other, like people know that aspect about me. And it's like not a big deal for me to share that. Like it doesn't make me feel like I'm less professional or less whatever else, but it lets people who understand a little bit more about me and the things that I'm excited about. And then it, it, it forms that connection back and forth. Right. So I, yeah, I think it's an, I think it's super important. Um, and I want to sure. say before I forget, cause I'm going to forget afterwards, but I really wanted to, to, I was thinking of this as we were, as we were prepping this topic. And, um, so, sh so shout out to some of my very close friends who just, you know, they were like, I'm going to start a podcast. And I was like, okay. And they asked for a whole <laughs> bunch of advice and I gave them the best advice I could. And I figured they would be like other friends who have said, you know, we're going to start a podcast. And then like, you know, months go by and nothing actually happens. These two just like launched their podcast and not only did they launch their podcast, but they like, opened up their Instagram channel. They like, you know, they, they've been just like doing the thing. Right. But what I will say, which I think is really good advice from watching them that I can give to everyone here is that they weren't afraid, um, or overthinking it about leveraging their network. Right. So like on their personal Instagram, on their personal Twitter, on their Facebook, they were like, we started a podcast. We're so excited about that. This is a sports podcast. I am like the least sporty person other than like watching hockey. That I'm like not a sports person, right? But I'm like, I'm just so excited for them and their excitement comes through that I'm like, I, I am interacting with their posts and sharing their stuff because I'm just so like happy and excited for them. So maybe I'm never going to be like a forever listener where I'm like completely engaged with all of their content because it doesn't relate to me. But I have a huge network and chances are tons of people within my network are going to see me sharing this, see me liking their posts, see me commenting, hear me celebrating them. And, and, you know, it was a little thing like that where, and they're not overdoing it. Like, like you said, there, it's a good mix of, you know, it's a post here and there, but like as important things happen, important milestones with their brand new podcast, they're sharing it and they're, you know, and they're letting people know like, Hey, we just opened this Instagram. We're going to share, you know, stuff about it over here. You know, Hey, we're really looking for reviews, you know, friends and family. If, you know, if you could check out the episode and let us know and leave a review, that would be really helpful. They're, they're starting with their network. And I think that's the most important place that you can start past platforms past, you know, don't, don't think about the where so much as who, who is it that you yes. know? Who do they know? Yes. You know, what, like, what, you know, yeah, what, 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 um, what's the word? What, like, things can you phone in? Like, who can you ask for help to, to get yourself up and running? Like, who are your, who are your people that can help you spread the word? And they may not, like me, they may not actually love the topic that you're doing, but it doesn't mean that they can't help you promote and help you spread the word and get, the, get that content 100%. out there. So. percent And here's something that's really cool. Uh, if you go to someone and says, look, guys, I know you guys aren't nerdy like me, but I'm starting a brand new Stranger Things podcast because we got something to talk about. Yep. Look, I get you're not nerdy like me, but please, please, if you know anybody who's into, you know, uh, Stranger Things or whatever, send them my way because that way they don't have to talk to you about it. <laughs> You can talk to me, right? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Just go ahead and bump them on me, whatever. And people will help you, like, because they really do. They do want to see you succeed. And now it's, I think what people used to do is hide their creator persona from their friends mm -hmm. because their friends are going to try to talk you out of it. Yep. The way you get your friends not to talk you out of it is tell them from a place of sincerity how much it means to you. And then yep. they won't do that. If you yeah. let them know, like I was hiding my YouTube channel thing for a while because I just, I don't know, everybody here knows me as the DJ guy. And 
I could do a venue here and, you know, get anywhere from three, you know, to 10,000 people to show up at an event and then do a, a video on YouTube and like four people watch it. So I thought it was going to like, you know, mess up my steeds. You'd be surprised. I'm walking around town and people are like, oh, I heard you're doing this whole YouTube thing now. Yeah, like, man, I didn't know you had a YouTube channel. And I'm like, what? They go, yeah, I would have watched that a long time. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yeah, oh. yeah, you're, yeah, you're just like, that's more powerful because you already have a connection and you can leverage your network's network's network versus, you know, sh shouting yeah. into the void in a space where no one knows who you are. You don't have the numbers, you know, behind you yet. So that's probably the best thing to do, in my opinion, anyway, while Real you are building your up. episodes. Yeah. Good. So like use that as your starting point. Don't, you know, don't harass your network to death. But I, but I think posting here and there, especially as those kind of fun moments was like, ah, we made it to episode eight, we did it. You know, whatever, like it's that kind of stuff. People want to celebrate with you. And if you're excited and you're, you know, and you're sharing that with them, I think that's, it's not a sell. It's not a sell to your friends, right? Or your network. Right. It's a, right. you're just being excited and happy and sharing something with them. So in that, in that vein, using us as an example, um, what we would do instead of just going to IG or LinkedIn and say, Hey, listen to the flow, listen to the flow, listen to the flow. Cause it just doesn't work. We can be like, anybody here start a brand new podcast at the beginning of the year. Here are three things that I wish I knew before mm -hmm. I started my podcast. And you go bang, 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 always normalize and, and just your audio at the end. We use Alphonic, there's Alito, there's built-in stuff in the Buzzsprout, there's so mm -hmm. forth, so on, et cetera. You put that down in the list. The next day, you could be like, make sure you get your artwork at the right size. It needs to be 3,000 by 3,000. I know it sounds mm -hmm. crazy, I know it's very specific, <laughs> but it is because I saw the thumbnails when I was using less than that and it's so blurry, nobody can read it. So mm -hmm. it's simple as pie, it's an easy step, but use and we use Canva, by the way. And so, yeah, if you like to check it out, if you go to flow.ecam.com, you can see how well our thumbnails work on all your devices. You're not saying listen, but you tell them to go, right? And they're probably going to check it out because they want to make sure they don't screw up, right? And then, you know, because our audience is other podcasters, so let's just yeah. cover that, right? You're, if your yeah. audience is something different, you have to have the ability in your brain to adjust this to you, right? And, and you'll probably you, have to tell them 10 more times, right? Like 11 times, right? So in different places, like you'll, you know, you'll, you'll share those pro tips on your LinkedIn. And then like, you know, in a couple more days, you'll share a behind the scenes photo of you recording your podcast on Facebook with a like, you know, whatever you're like, that's oh, so fun. Like I, I'm enjoying myself and really enjoying it. Like, all, you have to think about the platform and you have to think about the piece of content that works there, but you're going to have to, it's the, it's the same hidden message behind all of those posts. Listen to my podcast, but it's, but it's phrased in the ways it's that suit the platform, it, right? It's the phrase <laughs> that pays here today yeah. on WKIK. Yeah. Sorry. I just went old school. Um, the other thing that you can do, and I, I was talking to Dina about this, what is, got in my head for the longest time is I, I would always get irritated at the marketers on Twitter who would send the same tweet five times a day. And oh, I realized yeah. it's because I was on Twitter like that. So I would see it all five times. Yeah. But most the people don't person but isn't I, yeah. like that. So they yeah. don't see it. And then I realized if I look at, you know, either Jeff C or um, uh, Jim Fuse, like when they're, when they tag me in a podcast from like the podcast episode we did like a year ago, it's still people follow it, retweet it, and I get followers from it. So I'm sitting here, like, used to get mad at those people, but I'm growing my Twitter osmosisly. Yeah. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to work in these scripts, uh, by the way. Um, <laughs> because of they're reminding people, because not everybody sees it. So yeah. just like McDonald's told us every day, like seven, eight, nine times a day during the 80s that you deserve a break today. You deserve and a break today. Can, yeah. And now you're loving it you can have that you can put that out there and if the people that are going to get mad at that are going to tune you out and they're never going to be your customers anyway so yeah. stop thinking that everybody is your listener because if your listener is everybody your listener is nobody you are talking specifically to katie fox lives in uh new england got blanket red wine book <laughs> Chicken, <laughs> murder pod, yeah. murder podcast, yeah. two kids, and an extremely smart husband. That's it. That's what you're talking to. 
<laughs> so every other version of Katie, that's your audience, right? Yeah. I don't fit none of that. You're not trying to reach me. So yeah. don't talk to me, right? It's like, I know you guys are listening to my podcast, but now I got this new bottle of wine and this new blanket. Tell me three podcasts I should be listening to that I'm not hearing yet. And then your yeah. audience is like, wait, what? Cool. And now you know that. So let me call these other podcasters. I know my audience like them. And let's say, hey, uh, you don't know me, but my audience loves your podcast. How would you like to do a pod swap or trailer swap, an ad swap? You host mine, I host yours, whatever, whatever, whatever. All right. So before we forget, because we're the the question was what platform? So which we, yes. I think we answered, but just to be super clear with everyone. So any and all of the social platforms. So, but yes. again, try to keep it to the voice of the platform. So if you're on LinkedIn, it's more like pro tips, businessy, think, you know, it's helpful net information that could help a professional network versus Instagram Correct. versus, right? Like think about the platform you're on Twitter. You might want to post multiple times to hit different time zones that, you know, the feed is constantly updating. So be thinking through that. So any social platforms, other podcasts, which you just said, which I think is brilliant. The amount of people that get, you know, their podcast, you know, discovered it, by just being a guest or doing a pod swap on a similar podcast is huge. So again, think through your network, um, community spaces. So, you know, whether that's Discord, Facebook groups, any spaces where there's a, a like-minded community that your audience listens to is going to be absolutely a good place to, you know, to be spending time in and letting in a non-obnoxious, non-salesy way, letting people know about your, about your podcast newsletters so like you know if you send a newsletter for your business is a great place to be say hey we now have this podcast you're able to listen to it embedding your podcast episodes into blog posts so i mean really like anywhere that you can put content or that people are you can be starting to talk about that and that could be something like leveraging your existing personal channels and or business channels to say, hey, this exists now, or it could be starting new channels that are specific to your podcast. It might be like what we're doing where we started on the Ecamm business channels, but we will eventually grow out and have flow, the flow specific social channels. You got to think that aspect of it through, but there are lots of different places that you can put content, but you need to be thinking through frequency, what you're saying, what kind of content you're putting out should match the voice of the channel and the audience that sits there. If you just dupe it across all the different channels, you're going to annoy everyone and you're not going to win. So you, you need to think that through. Dang, there you go. <laughs> I, I, it's, no, it's funny because it's a lot, but I just don't think people really understand that you know it yeah it's so good. and i screwed up like even just talking right now i'm in the back of my mind thinking i like there are days where i post like today i'm like oh shoot you know the morning got away from me it was like way too busy i wanted to do like a little behind the scenes video saying how excited i was that i'm back and, you know and really excited to be back and i i ran out of time so i like i'm probably gonna do a follow-up later but i just posted on my facebook and my linkedin you know, the same message that's like, hey, I'm back. If you want to be in this live studio audience, come join me. That's not the best. I know that I could do differently and better to get a wider audience, but that's better than me not doing anything at all. And I'm, you know, so don't be afraid of like, if that's where you need to start, start there and see how it goes. Like, and, you know, test it. If you see people not responding to it or it doesn't work or it, you know, it's, it's cheesing people off, back off and try something different. But I think getting something out is better than not doing anything at all and being aware of like, oh, I could do this better or this differently next time will go a long way as well. So, so here, here's a cool way you could do that and basically have the exact same message, right? And it's like, you know, everybody and their mother is starting a podcast and maybe you're thinking about doing the same thing too. I record a podcast live every Tuesday and trust you, yeah. me, you yeah. see the ducks on the top, but underneath the bottom, the feet are moving like a hundred miles an hour. So if you're <laughs> ever wondering like how, uh, what's the, what's the word frenetic, how frenetic a, creating a podcast live could be come and check us out live on Tuesdays and you'll see it's not is polished as it looks in the end. And I think you'll get a kick out of knowing that you should start yours because everybody's looked like this behind the wall. 
You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's the same yeah. story. You're telling them to come to the live stream, but you're telling them from a position that they can relate to that this yeah. is nervous and frenetic and yeah. camera shy and whatever. And it's like, yeah, if you're feeling uncomfortable about starting your podcast because you feel like you're camera shy, dope. I will show you camera shy in real life every Tuesday at 12. Come and see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then they'll be yeah. like, what? Tra Everybody loves a train crash or, or yeah. an auto wreck, right? Like you go on the yeah. freeway, you like, you so yeah, just come invite them to see the, the wreck up. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, you covered it. You covered it so well. I don't want to add anything to that. <laughs> next question. Yeah, next question. <laughs> next question. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna round it off with: Should I pay for promotion? And probably follow up. We don't have here, but like, if so, when? <laughs> when should I start paying to do some promotion? As soon as you can viably afford it, but there's a caveat to this. Um, I think of something like uh, the new Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 84, or mm. or like Tenet. They threw $200 million at that boy. And, and people went on the first and second day. And mm -hmm. everybody that went on the first and second day was do not, unless you just want popcorn and quiet for an hour and a half, <laughs> Do not watch that, okay? Mm -hmm. When it comes out on HBO, don't watch it. Like, do not click it. Don't pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. And unless you just want to stir at gal, <laughs> just not even worth your energy, right? Mm -hmm. So two hundred million dollars down the freaking tubes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there after you adjust for inflation or whatever, they estimated lost a million dollar, a hundred million dollars on Netflix. Right. Same with Tenet. That was another one this year that was absolute rubbish. Um, and yeah, you just don't want to. And I mean, your your favorite team hyped up this new player that was going to come in and and change the game is going to be like only the goalie, but in Boston and flop, you know, so you don't want to hype up unless you are ready. And I, I know everybody wants to jump the gun because they think it's going to work. Again, if I could send you 2 million people to your show today, how you confidently ask yourself how many people are going to stay. Mm, now, 30. unless you live in, <laughs> right? I can say right now, if I send two- I'd be if thrilled if, the, if 30 people stayed, to be totally clear with everyone listening. I, I honestly I don't think we're going to get like 100 people to stay. Um, because we're not there yet. We will be, yeah. and it will get there. And it's going to be funny because, and um, the the Morbid Girls are my favorite example of this because mm -hmm. if you listen to their podcast today, I want you to do yourself a favor, whether you like true crime podcasts or not, they're a perfect example. Yeah. Listen to Alina Guy's podcast today, and then in your podcast aggregator, there's a button that says flip the episodes to the earliest one, and yeah. listen to that first train wreck from, I think they were at Alina's house. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah. And they it's joke about it all the time that they're, yeah, they're yeah. underwater. But you know what? I, like it's, so I came to that show later and I will say, you know, a, a bit of this is like what you said, like it, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a bit of it is like what you said, where it, they grew really quickly, but by the time that a lot of people jumped on, and certainly when I jumped on, they had this like bingeable catalog of episodes, right? So it was like, I, and I, I'm like, maybe I'm the opposite of a lot of people, but I started with like the newest episode and just went backwards. That's Cause I was I like, yeah, I was like, Hey, why not? Um, it's, it's problematic when they do two parter episodes, but, but in general, general went backward, but I was happy to listen all the way to it. And by the time that I got to those older episodes, I already it loved was, them. So I was like, right, whatever, it's, it's fine. Hearing, yeah. Right. It's like watching your friends F up. Like, yeah, legit. Exactly, exactly. Right. And even now, like when they do episodes where I'm like, oh, okay, whatever, I don't want to listen to that topic or I'm not into it. Like I, I either make that decision or I don't, but you know, it, it's, I think, like you said, I think you want to have probably, I don't know if we want to give a number to it, but I would say like 15 or 20 episodes before you start investing say, anything. Yeah. Before you want to invest like anything financially into it, just so that you have, like, if you do catch a decent amount of people and bring them on over, there's more than a couple of episodes for them to dive into. Right. Cause they like people 
people like to binge a podcast, right? They don't want yep. they don't want to wait. So if there's, you know, you need probably at least at least a few of them for them to sink into to really get to know you better. So everybody um, has and, gotten to a point where a podcast is over or a show is over and then now you're frustrated because there's no more yeah and then you peace out and find a different show right like you're like more like this and you're like okay this next show but i so i, I yeah i do think that that i think that that's important and i will say as you're thinking through like you know we it once you hit that point and you want to to invest in some way remember that investing doesn't necessarily only mean you know, advertising on the social platforms or like there, there are lots of other different options. So again, my friends who are like gun ho into the world of podcasting with their sports podcast, they're doing, you know, they're still fairly new. They only have a few episodes out there and they, they basically, they bought a $50 gift card to Amazon and they're like, Hey, you know, we're doing a giveaway for the holidays. If you, you know, like and share this post or, you know, or leave us, you know, reviews or they have like, you know, different things that you can do to win, you know, that that is spending and that is, you know, advertising, quote unquote, to try to build more listeners, but it's done in a way that is low lift. It's not an insane amount of money. They're not looking to get thousands of listeners off of it, but it'll help them kind of grow and, and reach and it'll get some people. Access. So there's different, you know, there's, there are different options for you. So it's not just like, I'm going to go out there and spend a thousand dollars on Twitter ads either. You know, there are options for you to start smaller, to think through different, you know, different options. You might want to advertise on, on a similar podcast, build a relationship there. So there's, there are ways that you can approach it that are not just kind of throwing money at the situation, really thinking through strategically what will make the most amount of sense and maybe slowly building it like, 50 bucks a year, you know, yep. and then work your way up to whatever a larger budget is. I think the, the, again, but where everyone's going to get, you know, sort of blindsided by this is you really have to go and rethink, like stop selling though. And that's the mm -hmm. hard part because even when you do a promotion, your promotion is not selling your promotion mm -hmm. is maybe promoting a, a 10 step guide around what your, your podcast is about. So yeah. let's say you're doing a podcast on uh, personal insurance, you know, like property and casualty insurance, as they call it, right? Mm -hmm. You would, you would be selling a guide on 10 things you didn't know about insurance and like how to save money. And you're going to give that away free. That is a promotion to the podcast. That's a whole different situation from come listen to my podcast where I tell you how to do all of the things. Yeah. Right. And because you have 20 episodes, that guide, the last page of that guide is hot links to all of the episodes mm -hmm. or the videos. If you're doing a video podcast, as you should be record all the time, <laughs> have those in the, the PDF, yeah. right? Because it's a PDF, right? You're not going to print it. Mm -hmm. You're going to look at it. So you can press the button and the video plays. Right. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, Google it. It's very simple. <laughs> do you don't want to do that. We have a guy that hey, just. <laughs> hey, hey, Doc, like, how do you put a video in a PDF? The same way I forgot, but you know what? I know how to go. How do you put a video in a PDF? Enter. Oh, just copy the link in, and there's a way to press embed in Acrobat or whatever you use, Canva, all of the above. Yeah. So you can have that information and then you're giving out this guide and this guide is in there. So if I'm going to get this guide about how to step into my power daily, right. Mm -hmm. And that guide is loaded with info on everything I need. It's in there. Right. So it was funny. Cause again, I'm going to use her as an example. Yesterday when I was talking to Dina and we were done talking, I was walking in the house and I had an epiphany and <laughs> it's because I called upstairs and I was like, Karen, I'm done talking to Dina. I'm on the way up. Can you reheat the pork belly that I got the day before from the barbecue? No, Rich, it's not as good. <laughs> it's not as good <laughs> as Terry Black's, but hey, it's close. And, and then Karen, because it's not her thing, she doesn't know what temperatures to reheat what at what. And if you reheat food bad, you ruin it. And then you can't have your leftovers. Yeah. So I'm like, pop it in the air fryer, set it to 350 for like 15 minutes and it'll be perfect. Right. 
Yeah. And then so she's like, okay. So every time I call her and tell her, hey, I'm on the way back. Can you reheat this? She always asks me for what is the temperature and the time. Yeah. And I was like, Dina, you need to make a cheat sheet yeah. for what to reheat stuff at. Pizza, 350, 15 minutes, or until you see the cheese bubble. Like yep. chicken wings, air fryer mode, super convection if you got it, blah, blah, blah. Like whatever those numbers are. I'm like, build that cheat sheet for like KFC, whatever, whatever, whatever. And those are great shorts, by the way, seven second shorts. People, I know you got to reheat your KFC. Please stop <laughs> doing it wrong. This is what you want. You want 325 at this and this and let it go slow and yeah. it'll be better. So if you know these things, those are like seven, 10 second shorts, but at the end you can put those out in a guide or a little sheet and you're sending that. You put that on IG, you boost that post, that post brings them back to your channel. Yeah, that absolutely. Might be it. It's not an ad going, hi, <laughs> I'm Alex Johnson. <laughs> Please listen to my master class. <laughs> like, no, Alex is, kill me for that. Alex is gonna kill me for that. But yeah, that's not how you sell it. You sell it by giving the value and then you promote the post that's giving away the value. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Winner, Boom, winner. we did it. Boom, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to add. I mean, I really, I think like, I think from start to finish, it's a process. It's going to take testing and trial and error. And you really just need to think through how you can get valuable content from your, what, your longer form podcast out there to lure people back to the podcast without hard selling. I think that that's my summary of, of podcast promotion. Very good. All right, cool. Let's wrap it up then. Guys, this has been another episode of The Flow. It's so exciting to have Katie back in action. And as soon as he gets back in action, we're going to run a couple episodes and I'm going to run away. <laughs> so there. So there. <laughs> now Katie's in charge. <laughs> payback. Payback, Kate. Um, guys, yeah. make sure you jump over to flow.ecam.com and press all of the myriad buttons so that you're listening on your favorite platform. We're everywhere in podcast getting this guy. But flow.ecam.com is the website if you want to get there. You can also jump on our volley. It is really, really cool. It allows you to get in, ask questions, get your questions answered back by either ourselves or people in the community. So it's it's absolutely fantastic. Volley is the new move. And if you want to reach us, reach us out that way. And then also just don't forget that you can always send us an email at, you know, floridicam.com. This episode and all episodes are sponsored by Speedify. And I can't tell you how dope it is. Speedify has been an amazing thing. And it's actually the gift that my friends and family don't know that they're getting, but I'm buying it for everybody <laughs> because of the fact it's a fantastic VPN in your phone, which yeah. is more and more important nowadays, especially with the traveling. Yeah. And it, uh, you can watch Netflix stuff that don't come here. And they'd be like, hey, yeah. how you watching all of these shows? None of your business. Let me show you. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm telling everybody to get Speedify as the VPN. Not only the fact that it saves your streams and makes everything incredible, it's like the cheapest VPN out there and it works. It just works. Slide a button on like Donkey Kong. Yeah. So we're absolutely in love with Speedify. And last week they posted a whole Instagram thing about me, made me look like a superhero. And I was like, I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so big up you Speedify. Will you will need it you will at some point or another you will need it and you'll be like thank god i have that so let's just trust us right? that you will need it anybody that saw last week's episode they saw me completely <laughs> wreck a live stream because i forgot to hit the speedify button no! and Luis was like at the end doc i'm going to murder you i'm like sorry Luis. <laughs> here's the video file i'm uploading it now okay hi <laughs> so yeah. yes yes make sure you get the speedify on thank you guys uh for just listening to the flow. We'll see you again next week. See you next week. All right, cool. I got one question I need to cover real quick and then yeah. we're good. And then I got to do my stream. Oh, all okay. right. Fine, fine. Well, Peace look, right out. <laughs> hey, you guys are welcome to jump over to my stream. I'm just doing random Q and A. So if you want to come and ask more yeah. questions, it's on directly after this on my channel, which is very easy, Doc Rock. Uh, super simple. So, 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 so Sal said, <laughs> we're um, punching today. Sorry, I, Sal. We, we <laughs> care. We care. I'm, I'm like looking for it. Sal said, <laughs> Sal's my man. I love Sal. I do a news update type of show and want to sell advertising against them. Any tips for how to engage, engage potential sponsors and the possibility of what a podcast can offer them small or big fish hunting? Oh, okay. great question. Okay. 
great question. Very hard to do. It's very hard yeah. to get advertisers to understand that they need to be yeah. spending on a podcast unless you're talking about a podcast that specifically benefits them. So mm-hmm. if you have, say, let's just say you're at the point where you have a thousand listeners and they're pretty engaged and you have built a community around them. Listening to a podcast is not the same thing as building a community around the Mm -hmm. podcast that we listen to that we love that plays all the commercials that we hate. They normally have large communities around that podcast as a person who has a decent sized community is about a thousand people. I know about a hundred of those people. If I say that this cool small rig thing that Rich told me about, or anybody else, not just me, even Rich comes into our community and say, hey, this is the move. This little $25 small rig phone holder is the best. Small rig will sell no less than 15, 20 of these. Right? Yeah. Because, so if Paul comes in the community and says, hey, like this, this wire has been bulletproof, all the other iPhone wires, I hate them, only buy this type of wire. Paul would sell 50 of them. Like people in our community are connected. They're engaged. When you can prove that it doesn't matter that it's small, it's active. Yeah. Because they can go to a person doing the exact same thing as you that has a hundred thousand listeners. But if they say buy this red cable and they sell two, your hundred thousand listeners are useless to them. Yeah. Everybody is way over the understanding of just buying big numbers. Big numbers do not work anymore. It doesn't mean conversions. And even the advertisers are slowly figuring this out. So micro influencers are the move. So you got to tell them what can you offer them and what they're going to get out of it. And they'll listen. And I will say, like, if you can find the small to medium sized companies that you can start by by reaching out to them and saying, Hey, I use your product. I love your product or service or whatever. And I like, I would really, really love to talk about you during my pot, like give them a couple of weeks free or a couple, like to test it out and show them the value. And then it's easier for you to go back later and say like, Hey, I like, I did some free ads for you on, you know, this episode, this episode, this episode, like here, here are the results. Like I would really love to continue to work with you or like, you know, be able to prove it out because it's really difficult as a business to be able to think through like, okay, like I know this podcast has a good following. I've seen their media kit. I know they have a really active community. I don't know whether or not that's actually going to convert anything for me as a business, you know, or like, and is it worth like an endless monthly investment for me? It may not be, but it might be worth me giving free licenses, you know, as a giveaway every single month or like, or, you know, maybe that podcaster is doing an event that I can sponsor where it's a one-off investment. Like you can build the relationship that way by just starting and saying like, Hey, I really want to work with you. No, like, I don't want anything from you right now. I just want permission to be able to talk about you and share your logo. And then you're able to kind of prove out the value. You know, you're going to bring the value to them. So if you could start by making it really easy and start by not asking them for anything, you'll go a long way, I think, in being able to really build a a long-term relationship. Right. And another big thing, I just want you to know this, and I want to say this from the bottom of my heart, because nobody wants to hear this. If you're getting into podcasting as a revenue source, like you're getting into podcast to <laughs> make money, do not. That yeah. doesn't happen. It's a long way before you get to that. Right. Yep. Even somebody like Leo has a massive podcast network. Even he will tell you it took years to build up the kind of money that even makes it viable against giving out egg rolls at Jack in the Box. You yeah, be you're better to spend yeah. your time selling Jack in the Box jumbo jacks at $15 yeah. an hour than to do this. This has so, to be a movement. Yeah. Sell other things. Don't rely on adver- advertisers to be able to help. Yeah. yeah. Sell you sell a course, right. do a membership, do uh, you know other things that are extension of your podcast, but yeah, I completely agree with that. I think it's It's, it's funny cuz we get those emails every single day and it's like, but why should we advertise on your podcast or your show or your stream? Like what I've never seen you talk about Ecamm before. I've never seen you make a tutorial video. I've never seen you engage in the community and you're just going to hot drop a link into the email today talking about, Hey, can you give us, you know, some money to uh, run this podcast? Yeah. Man, in, in the nightclub, that'll be considered rape. 
<laughs> Whoa, just, this got intense. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but I mean, yeah. you really think about it, that would be considered bad. You wouldn't just yeah. just walk up to somebody, grab them off the middle of the street and kiss them. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. You, you, go, you go to jail for some craziness like that. So why does you, why do you think that would work in business? I'm just serious. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I think the, I'm a big believer in the, the easier that you can make as someone that receives an insane amount of ask emails, emails filled with asks. I beg of all of you listening to put together something that, you know, is very easy for people that has, you know, you don't have to give them the entire idea, but if you can just give them like your vision of, of why, why them, and you make it very, very easy for them to be able to say yes, small steps of saying yes is much easier than saying like, hey, you know, I'm an awesome, you know, here are my amazing numbers. I want this crazy amount of money. I find small steps to work up with them and build that relationship. I completely agree with what Doc's saying. So yeah, and I would work, I would work with a smaller thing, like um, to South Point, if you're doing something you say you're talking about sports, I would go find play it against sports and see if they have an affiliate program. Yeah. And just work off of that. Right and if you can yeah. prove that you're killing the affiliate program, these guys normally also have an ambassador program. We yeah. have an affiliate program, but after you sell 50 license, you become a champion, whole yeah. different pay scale, whole different setup. And you can mm -hmm. find out more about that on Friday after the demo. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The cold pictures are so hard for any brand, not just you get me. I know it's, it's true. I, there's just, there's so many of them that if you can do your best to just be friendly and find ways to build relationships, it, it makes a big difference. I, 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 I laugh never... the hardest when it's a boilerplate email that came yeah. from some course <laughs> that says, hey, we're going to show you how to get brands to sponsor your show. And I was like, I swear I've read this email 19 times <laughs> from different people. So I don't Dear know what course name. they <laughs> yeah. yeah, Their yeah. first name. We've been listening to your show and we think you guys are awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, anyway that should be a whole nother stream anyway gang i gotta run i got a stream to do you guys come over and hang out with me after the same <laughs> questions if you got more thank you guys it's super amazing pk aloha brother um i don't know if you heard the news from home paul paul's from hawaii katie um uh manaloa pele she got mad and she started throwing lava around so it's kind of cool it looks really dope right now but nobody's getting yeah, hurt. It's, it's, okay it's as long as pretty. someone gets hurt yeah it's it's just pretty it, okay. it, the whole thing is glowing orange, but the, the VOG, my eyes are killing me right now, Paul. <laughs> oh, be safe, everyone, all of our Hawaii friends. Have a good one, people. Love you guys. <laughs>